Alrighty. Well, it's 3.30 in the morning, and I'm up. Yeah, I'm awake. And um, I'm, I was just laying here and thinking of something. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that has happened in recent years, and especially since the year 2020, uh, that's opened a lot of people's eyes to the condition of the world and why it's that way and who's responsible for it in terms of the group of people who have, um, oh, I don't know how I'd put it. I guess you could say the authors of our destiny, economically and socially and so on. Um, there's a lot of people really becoming wise to what's going on and to who is behind a lot of the stuff that's happening. Um, here's the thing. The powers that be, they claim that people like me, who have the opinions that I have and who say the things that I say and so on, they claim two things. They claim that people like me are idiots, basically we're the village idiot, standing in the town square spouting nonsense, um, that we're basically just unenlightened assholes who lack any common sense or any knowledge. You know, I mean, our own prime minister labeled people like me basically anti-science and, and racist and all the rest of it. So apparently I am a really dumb, really uncivilized person who has rejected all human advancement since the Stone Age. I'm telling you this on, on my um, phone, <laughs> on my smartphone here, I'm telling you that that's who they say I am. I guess my question is, why do powerful men, who apparently are highly knowledgeable on all different topics and very civilized, uh, why do they care so much what the village idiot thinks? I mean, if you go back to the little villages of yesteryear, I don't think the village doctor and the village lawyer and the man who ran the general store, the successful businessman, was too concerned about what the village idiot had to say or was thinking. Certainly wouldn't advocate throwing the man in jail or sending him to a camp or debanking him or deplatforming him or whatever for what he says. You know, take that man's soapbox away, he's dangerous. You know, they'd say, oh, that's just Bob or, or, or Bill or Steve or whatever. He's the village idiot, you know. He says weird stuff. Don't mind him, you know. We've gotten used to him. Don't mind him. Uh, you may even be a little entertained. Maybe you get a little sh little chuckle out of some of the crazy stuff that guy comes up with. But um, they don't do that. What they do is now they say, well, we, we, this is dangerous speech. People are being put at risk by the things you're saying. You can't say that. We'll have to put you in jail. We'll have to lock you up so that you can't keep saying the stuff you've been saying. You know, and it's like they're talking to the village idiot. So they say... So I guess the thing is, if guys like me, who they call tinfoils and, you know, conspiracy theorists and everything else, if we really are the village idiots, then what possible threat could anything we say have? What possible threat could there be in it that it would warrant prison? 
Because we have a government now that that's what they want to do with anybody who speaks against the narrative. They want to put us well, want to put us away. They're passing laws like Bill Bill C six, like Bill C sixty three, which will put us away for saying put guys like me away for saying what I'm saying right now. And so, so on the one hand, they're saying that we're stupid, ignorant, basically backward. You know, and on the other hand, they're saying that the things we say are dangerous. You know, um, people have to be protected from the things a guy like me might say. Well, again, you know, prison has generally been in the past, at least, that was reserved for serious matters. You know, it was reserved for people who did things like murder and rape. And robbery, all really serious things. It certainly wasn't reserved for some idiot that doesn't know what he's talking about, but has strong opinions anyway. I mean, which is what they claim people like me are. So I got to ask myself, why are these highly intelligent, apparently highly civilized men who want to kill 95% of the population, according to them, as they've said, that you know, the population has to decrease by 95% by the year 2030. Well, they're not going to accomplish that by handing out prophylactic rubbers in Africa. You know, they're just not. I mean, there's going to have to be a mass culling for that, to, for that to work. And again, I may be the village idiot standing on the corner spouting nonsense, but ask any mathematician, and he'll tell you it isn't going to work. We're not going to have a 95% reduction in the population of the world by attrition through um, the use of birth control and, and things like that. That just isn't going to happen. Um, over a longer period of time, it could, I suppose. If we all stopped having kids, you know, um, then yeah, eventually we'd all grow old and die and there'd be nobody left. So yeah, it's possible that it could be done by attrition, but it isn't going to be done by the year 2030. There's a lot of people younger than me around who are still in the prime of their life, you know, and even if they don't reproduce, they're going to last another 40 or 50 years. So... 2030 is, um, like what now, we're in 2024, it's like six years away, basically. So, no, we're, we're not going to um, accomplish anything that way. You know, what, what 20, let's see, no, 25 or 60, something. yeah, it's six years away. Just count it on my fingers there because I'm, because I'm the village idiot, you know. <laughs> Had to count on my fingers because I couldn't figure it out in my head. I'm the guy they want to lock up for my opinion. What's so dangerous about my opinions that they want to lock me up? You know? Again, unless I'm hitting a nerve. And um, unless what I'm saying does pose a danger. Because there's some truth in it. And if it does pose a danger, who does it pose a danger to? Maybe it poses a danger to the people who want to lock me up for saying it. You know? I mean, if they consider my speech that serious, while at the same time saying that I'm a stupid person who knows nothing, just an, an asshole spouting off at the mouth about things I know nothing about, then I guess the thing is, if that's what they're saying on the one hand, but then they're saying that my speech is dangerous to the point where I have to be shot up one way or another, even to the point of, 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 of using prison as, as a way to do it. Um, what that tells me is that they, they think somebody's in danger by the things that myself and others like me say. Who, who though? Who might be in danger because of the things myself and others like me say? 
Um, maybe it's them. Maybe I'm hitting a nerve. Maybe at least some of the stuff I'm saying is is true. You know, they say a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, I mean, if you stand there and listen to the village idiot long enough, something he says is going to make sense. The rest might be gobbledygook, but he's going to make sense at least once. If you stand there for a full day and listen to him, you're going to hear at least one thing that does actually make sense. And I suppose that may be what they're afraid of. I don't know, but... I mean, people with nothing to hide... really couldn't care less about the ramblings of an idiot. And I mean, like I say, our Prime Minister claims that we're idiots. Us, the, us, us people who think like I do... Um, claims that we're backward and stupid... yet wants to lock us up. So, to shut us up. Anyway, um, I can tell you in my lifetime, I've had lots of conflict with other people. And what I found is that depending on what the nature of the conflict is and what sort of a threat another person might pose to me, my reaction to the conflict